This vid is going to be just a bit different. No wonderful drone shots, no fun activities, no great shots of my wife. Hey, stop looking at my wife. Cheers. No, this video's about a mistake I think I made. Not a huge mistake, but maybe not a small mistake. Maybe not just an oops either. The real reason I say I think is because I didn't do all the research. Rumsfeld, can you clear this up? There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. 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 Thanks for clearing that up, Rumsfeld. In my case, I just didn't do the research. But let's do the research now. Together. Mads. The captain of SV Magic, and a good friend of mine, said to me one day, the two most important commodities on a cruising vessel are power and fresh water. And I believe he's right. But if you have a water maker on board, which uses power to make your fresh water, then it could be said that power is the most important commodity on a sailing vessel. So let's take a quick look at how the power systems work together aboard Aquarius. Here you can see pretty much the entire power system aboard Aquarius. Yes, there are a few components missing, well, many, like the charge control circuitry that tells you how much current is going into and out of the batteries. But for the most part, all the big pieces are there. I place the house batteries in the center because they're the heart of any electrical system aboard a sailing vessel. If your batteries start to go bad, you won't be dead in the water, but I can tell you this, you ain't going to be very comfortable. As your batteries start going bad, you will be required to turn on the generator more and more, or the main engine more and more. Even if you had enough solar power to meet all your power requirements, solar is only going to help you during the day. You're going to have to start your engine to get you through the night. Oh, and that wind generator is not going to help you much during the night unless you're anchored in 40 knots of wind. And quite frankly, I would rather run my engine all night than be anchored in 40 knots of wind. Let's talk about how all these power systems work together aboard Aquarius in varying conditions. First condition, plugged into shore power. You have to have 220 volts AC 50 hertz or 60 hertz to plug Aquarius into shore power. If the power at the dock is 110 volts, then I would have to find a 110 volt AC to 220 volt AC transformer to plug in. For this video, shore power is 220 volts AC and Aquarius is a 50 hertz boat, so some of the systems will not work aboard Aquarius if the shore power is 60 hertz. The 220 volt AC shore power is always shown in red. The power goes through the AC switch powers up the battery charger and enters the 220 volt AC boat power, which is the AC power inside Aquarius, providing power to the washer, the dishwasher, the plugs that we plug all of our computers into, etc. There is a 24 volt connection from the charger to the battery bank, and another 24 volt connection from the battery bank to the 24 volt boat power. This 24 volt connection provides power to almost everything aboard Aquarius lights, winches, water maker, windlass. Now that we have 220 volt power flowing, we'll turn on the battery charger on the 220 volt panel and make sure everything we need is on on the 24 volt panel. All 24 volt DC power is shown in light blue. Aquarius is equipped with a Victron 100 amp charger so we know our batteries are being charged. Our normal 24 volt burn rate is around 7 to 10 amps depending on what we are running. So most of the time we can run everything we need and still be charging our batteries at 90 amps 
if needed. Okay, let's do the good, bad, and the ugly. Aquarius is oh so quiet, except for that damn marina noise. Our batteries are loving this constant charge. This marina is charging how much? We can run our air con, water heater, everything. Yes, everything at the same time. But of course, you pay for it. If the power is not 50 hertz and it's 60 hertz, then of course we can't run certain things like the washer. But the worst thing that could happen is getting bad power. If there are problems with the power, like spikes or grounding issues, it can really mess up your happy home by blowing out your charger or your air con or your dishwasher. Not to mention the increased electrolytic and galvanic corrosion. Just leave your boat plugged into a bad shore power system for, let's say, several months and come back to find half of your outboard of your inboard outboard missing. Now let's turn on the generator and you can see what the onboard AC switch does. Aquarius prefers her own power. It's always a nice sine wave and it's 50 hertz. Once the genset is running, it doesn't matter if the shore power is plugged in or not. Aquarius will use the 220 AC power from the genset, which we know is 50 hertz. You can also see that the genset powers the 12 volt charger, which charges the starter battery for the genset and the main engine. Let's look at the good, bad, and ugly while running the genset. We've got a 7 kilowatt Onan generator, but we have to put up with the noise of the generator. We also can run our three air conditioners, washer and dishwasher. Oh, but we can't run everything at the same time. And just a note, we usually only run the washer and the dishwasher with the genset because we know it's good clean power. The worst thing about running the generator is we have to burn diesel fuel. Okay, let's shut off the generator, start up the main engine. If there's no wind and we have to start up the main engine to move Aquarius, we kind of get the electrical power for free. Aquarius has two alternators on the main engine. One charges a 12 volt starter battery. 12 volts is shown in dark blue. The other alternator provides a hundred amp of charging power to the house battery bank. That's shown in light blue. And because we have a 100 amp alternator on the main engine, it's like having a backup generator. But a 100 amp at 24 volts is only 2.4 kilowatts, which is not quite like running your 7 kilowatt Onan generator. You can also see we're getting our 220 volt AC boat power from our inverter. That means we only got 1.5 kilowatts of AC power inside. So let's do the good and the bad. The batteries are getting a great charge. But again, you have to listen to that engine noise. Oh, Aquarius is moving without her sails. But, of course, I don't know if that's good or bad. And we only have 1.5 kilowatts of AC power inside Aquarius. And again, the worst thing about running your main engine is your burning diesel. Now let's shut off all the engines and see what happens on a bright sunny day. Our solar is charging the batteries and our normal DC burn rate is about 7 to 10 amps. With our 600 watts of solar, we can make about 25 amps at 24 volts. That means most of the time we're charging at about 15 amps. Okay, it's time for the good and the bad. Our batteries are being charged, but we only have 1.5 kilowatts of power on the inside. But we're getting free energy from the sun. There's really nothing bad about it, except I'd like to have one kilowatt of solar. The toughest time for your batteries is at night or on a cloudy day. Unless you have an engine running, you're getting all your power from your batteries. Yep, just like I said before, the batteries are the heart of an electrical system aboard a sailing vessel. Pumping electrons through your boat, just like your heart pumps blood through you. If we have to conserve energy, we'll turn off the AC inverter, but that creates an inconvenience as we have no 220 power on the inside of Aquarius. Well, it's time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. For nighttime, all your power is coming from your batteries. If your batteries start getting low, you may have to conserve. 
and the first thing you do is shut off your 1.5 kilowatt AC inverter. If you start getting down to around 24.6 volts, you have to start an engine. And that's why you have to keep a close eye on your battery level. I fitted Aquarius with Victron's 12 volt, 110 amp hour AGM batteries. And it's time to start that research that I didn't do. What we're gonna do now is pull out some important numbers from the Victron website. Let's say we are starting with a completely charged battery. What do these numbers say? Well, if I discharge the battery from 100% to 0% over 20 hours, I'll get 100% of my power back. But if I discharge at a higher rate, I'll get much less. Time to do some math. We have a 110 amp hour battery divided by 20 hours. That is 5.5 amps. So if you want, 100% of your power out of your batteries, the maximum current is 5.5 amps per battery. Aquarius has four sets of batteries. So that means we can only pull 22 amps out of our battery pack if we want to get all the battery power out of our batteries. Okay, so what if we discharge it faster? If I discharge the batteries over one hour, it would be at a rate of 110 amps. And if I look at the numbers, I would only get 65% of the power out of the batteries if you discharge them over one hour. Let's do some more research. I'm gonna skip over how the batteries perform over temperature because it's not as important to me. These are the most important numbers for AGM batteries. The number of cycles you get depending on how deep the cycle is. Wow! Let's try to put this into English. According to Victron's own numbers, if we pull 80% of the power out of our batteries, we'll only get 450 cycles. 50% of the power will get 600 cycles, and 30% of the power will get 1500 cycles. What does all this mean? We need some definitions. What do they mean by life? That's when your 110 amp hour battery just became a 55 amp hour battery. Now let's look at the voltages on an AGM battery. Though the charging voltage might be up around, let's say 14.6 volts, a full battery is about 12.9 volts, 75% power is about 12.6 volts, 50% power is about 12.3 volts, and so on. Now we'll take it one step further, and we'll look what a cycle is aboard Aquarius. Aquarius is a 24-volt system, not a 12-volt system. So all the voltages from the previous graph are doubled. When we wake up in the morning, our batteries are at the lowest level, and they rise as they're charged by the solar cells. They reach a maximum at late afternoon, then they quickly fall to about 25.8 volts, which is 100% charged. And then all night long, they slowly discharge down to what we keep is about 24.6 volts. We never let our batteries get below 24.6 volts. So what's the bottom line? One cycle equals one day if I'm sailing or if I'm at anchor or I'm on a mooring. Now let's look at what happens to your batteries as they age, and it ain't a pretty picture. So this is what I have to look forward to after 300 cycles, 400 cycles, 600 cycles, and 1000 cycles. And I hope you are watching the generator start time because that means I have to get up and turn on the generator for three hours to charge those batteries. By the end of 1,000 cycles, we're at two cycles per day. Now that I've done the research on the Victron batteries, let's install them into Aquarius. We have eight aboard, two each in series, four pairs in parallel. And voila, this is our current 24 volt battery pack. What this is telling me is I might have battery anxiety 
at four in the morning within two or three years. Okay, now it's time to do some real research. Why didn't I look at, let's say, lithium batteries before I bought these AGM batteries? Oh, wait a second, I know why. Because fire's probably the only thing that could sink Aquarius. That was lithium ion batteries, but let's look at lithium iron phosphate batteries. We're going to take a look at the Battleborn 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. Okay, let's pull the important numbers off the website and see where we are. So the important numbers are life is 3000 to 5000 cycles. You can cycle a lithium iron phosphate battery to 100% of the total charge. And after the life of the battery, you're still at 75 to 80% capacity. So now let's build up a battery pack for Aquarius out of Battleborn batteries. We're going to use four batteries. So 24 volt system, two in series, two sets in parallel. And voila, our 24 volt battery pack. But I believe the number of cycles is the selling point on this battery. So let's get ready to rumble. Nah, I don't think that's what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do it a little different. We're gonna go battery pack versus battery pack. Price, well, yeah. AGM won that one. Well, and uh, they also won usable amps. 500 pounds versus 100 pounds? Oh my god. But this makes me think, why would anybody buy AGM batteries ever again? 600 cycles down to 50% power or 3,000 cycles down to 75% power? Okay, let's wrap this up because I'm starting to get pissed. Instead of keeping the vertical scale percentage life remaining, we're going to change it to usable amp hours. Instead of cycles at the bottom of the graph, I'll use years. Since Aquarius is a cruising vessel, we use about 300 cycles per year. And because I know our usage during the night, I'll say 137 amp hours is what I need to make it through the night. So how does each battery pack line up now? AGM batteries. After two years, I'm already into battery anxiety. And the Battleborn batteries, uh, I, I'm out 10 years and I haven't even entered into battery anxiety. Okay, let's go back and we're going to change the cost because over a 10 year period, the cost of the AGM batteries is going to be over $10,000. And the cost of the lithium iron phosphate batteries remains the same. Wow. And after one year, the usable amp hours are just about the same. When I originally ordered my Victron batteries in Martinique, the electrician said I could fit 10 inside my battery compartment. It ended up I could only fit 8. If I could go back in time, I'd go with 6 Battleborn batteries. And they went out in every category. Conclusions. The lithium ion phosphate batteries went out by a fair bit. If you want to talk about environment, discharge rate, charging rates, safety, do your research because the lithium iron phosphate batteries win. I want a divorce. <laughs>